Good afternoon, this is Akashwani and I'm Sarabjit Kaur with the Midday News. The headlines. Lander module of Chandrayaan-3 reaches required lunar orbit to commence soft landing process on south pole of the moon. Descent to surface expected around 5.45 p.m. on Wednesday. Union Home and Cooperation Minister Amit Shah launches Garib Kalyan Maha Abhiyan and 20 years report card of Madhya Pradesh government in Bhopal. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur and BJP President J.P. Nadda assess damages due to rain and landslides in Himachal Pradesh. IMD predicts very heavy rainfall in isolated places of Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand during the next two to three days. In Punjab, flood situation worsens due to water released from various dams in the state. And in cricket, India to play second T20 of three match series against host Ireland at Melahad Cricket Club. And now the news in detail. The second deorbiting maneuver for the lander module of Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft was performed successfully early this morning. The lander module was placed in a 25 by 134 kilometers orbit around the moon. A tweet by ISRO says that the health of the lander module Vikram is normal. The tweet adds that the lander module has reached the required orbit to commence its descent towards the surface of the moon. It said the module would undergo internal checks and await the sunrise at the designated landing site. ISRO said the powered descent is expected to commence on 23rd August. The momentous occasion when the lander carrying a rover within it will soft land on the moon near the South Pole between 5.30 and 6.30 p.m. A successful moon landing will make India the fourth country to have achieved this feat. More details from our correspondent. The second and final deboosting of its Vikram lander of Chandrayaan-3 done today was a critical deboosting maneuver. Another significant step towards a soft landing on the lunar surface, the Vikram lander will be reoriented to 90 degrees, a position suited well for safe landing. The lander's thrusters will provide controlled propulsion until the touchdown is achieved. A retired scientist of ISRO and science writer Dr. B. R. Guru Prasad has spoken exclusively to Akashwani News on the challenges involved in accomplishing the task of soft landing Vikram lander on the surface of the moon. As per the Kepler's loss, when the spacecraft is very near the moon, it is moving very fast. At that time, you have to reduce its speed. You apply propulsive power so that it very slowly approaches the lunar surface and makes a gentle landing, in fact, which is called a soft landing. So that is the most difficult thing because moon is at a distance of 384,000 kilometers and from the earth, you cannot control the spacecraft directly. So the onus of responsibility is shifted to the electronic brain of Chandrayaan, Vikram Lander. It collects essential information through various sensors, the gyroscopes, velocimeters, okay, altimeters. And using such information from different sources and the embedded software, that takes care of navigating the spacecraft properly to make a gentle landing. That is the most difficult thing, I would say. Very few countries have accomplished this kind of things. Vikram Lander has the most difficult task of landing in the South Pole, where no one has landed till now. Once achieved, this will put Indian space program on highest pedestal among the committee of nations. Sudhindra Akashwani News, Bengaluru. Russia's first lunar lander in nearly 50 years, Luna 25, failed to enter its scheduled pre-landing orbit of the moon yesterday. The Russian space cooperation, Roscosmos, in a statement said that the maneuver failed due to a glitch. Roscosmos is analyzing the situation, it said, without giving further details. Russia launched the craft last week. It is scheduled to land on the moon's south pole on the 21st of August. It is not immediately clear if the plan stands still. Union Home Minister Amit Shah launched Garib Kalyan Maha Abhiyan today in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. He also presented the report card for 20 years of the BJP government in the state. In his address on this occasion, Mr. Shah said, We have made Madhya Pradesh one of the most developed states of the country by coming out of the stigma of Bimaru state. He termed the 20 years of BJP's rule as the golden period of development. He said that in the next 25 years of 
अमृत काल वी विल मेक मध्य प्रदेश फुली डेवलप्ड एंड प्रॉस्परस एज वेल एज अ सेल्फ सफिशियंट स्टेट Mentioning the development works of Madhya Pradesh, Mr. Shah said that for the last ten years there has been a double-engine government in the country and the state, and its effect is visible in every sector, including road, electricity, and water. Modi ji ne jo sari yojnaye banayi hai, niche tak double-engine ki sarkar ne pahunchayi, aur Modi ji ne bhi yojnaye banane mein bhi kamy nahi chodi, aur yojnao ke upar kisi brick prakar ki katoti nahi rakhi. लक्षांक नहीं रखा है संपूर्ण सेचुरेशन ही मोदी सरकार का लक्षांक है संपूर्ण सेचुरेशन की दिशा में गरीब कल्याण का कंसेप्ट स्वतंत्र भारत में अगर किसी ने किया है तो हमारे प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने किया है और इसीलिए मोदी जी को बार बार जनादेश प्राप्त होता है Comparing the tenure of the BJP government with the previous Congress governments, the Union Home Minister said that in the last 10 years, under the leadership of Narendra Modi, 10 crore people have come out of poverty, and this is the first time since independence that 10 percent people of the country's population have come out of poverty. He said the BJP government has increased road connectivity eight times, national highways three times, and agriculture development 6.5 times. दिल्ली मुंबई औद्योगिक कॉरिडोर इसमें इंदौर शहर को शामिल किया गया है इकतीस हजार करोड़ की लागत से 906 किलोमीटर लंबा नर्मदा एक्सप्रेस वे इसका विचार किया है पांच हजार करोड़ की लागत से 300 किलोमीटर की भारत माला परियोजना को हम आगे लेकर आए हैं और पांच वित्तीय वर्षों में सिर्फ पांच वित्तीय वर्षो में हमने बहत्तर किलोमीटर सड़कों की लंबाई को बढ़ाने का काम किया है भारतीय जनता पार्टी नेशनल प्रेसिडेंट जेपी नड्डा एंड यूनियन मिनिस्टर अनुराग सिंह ठाकुर टुडे विजिटेड एंड असेस द डैमेजेस इन फ्लड अफेक्टेड एरियाज ऑफ द सिरमौर ऑफ हिमाचल प्रदेश दे इंटरेक्टेड विद द अफेक्टेड लोकल्स द बीजेपी प्रेसिडेंट इंश्योर्ड द पीपल दैट द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट वुड एक्सटेंड ऑल असिस्टेंस नीडेड फॉर रिलीफ एंड रिहेबिलिटेशन बीजेपी नेशनल प्रेसिडेंट मिस्टर नड्डा एंड यूनियन मिनिस्टर मिस्टर ठाकुर ऑल्सो विजिटेड शिव मंदिर समोहिल एंड कृष्णा नगर लैंडस्लाइड अफेक्टेड एरियाज ऑफ शिमला टू टेक स्टॉक ऑफ द रेस्क्यू एंड रिहेबिलिटेशन वर्क एंड लॉस ऑफ लाइफ एंड प्रॉपर्टी मिस्टर ठाकुर ऑल्सो अश्योर द अफेक्टेड पीपल ऑफ ऑल पॉसिबल कोऑपरेशन फ्रॉम द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट लेटर दे विल ऑल्सो विजिट द कलामिटी स्ट्रक पार्ट्स ऑफ बिलासपुर एंड शिमला former chief minister and leader of opposition jai ram thakur along with other leaders also accompanied them this is akashwani giving you the news for quick news updates round the clock follow us on our twitter handle at air news alerts welcome back The India Meteorological Department IMD has predicted very heavy rainfall in the isolated places of Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand during the next 2 to 3 days. Due to heavy rainfall, flash flood risk is likely over a few watersheds and neighborhoods in Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand during the next 24 hours. According to the latest weather forecast by IMD, the sub-Himalaya, West Bengal, Sikkim and Bihar will also witness heavy rainfall during the next four days as per imd heavy rainfall activity is also likely to increase over east and adjoining central india madhya pradesh and vidarbh will witness heavy rainfall over the next two days the weather agency said a low pressure area formed over the northwest bay of bengal is likely to move west northwestwards across northeast madhya pradesh during the next 24 hours we spoke to imd scientist r k jinamani for more updates पम दबाव का क्षेत्र है अभी मध्य प्रदेश में है इसी के कारण से मेनली जो पश्चिम मध्य प्रदेश की जो आसपास इलाका है वहाँ आइसोलेटेड हैवी रेनफॉल हो सकता है और उसी के साथ साथ जो पहाड़ी का इलाका है हिमाचल प्रदेश उत्तराखंड वहाँ जो है 21, 22 अगस्त को हैवी टू वेरी हैवी रेनफॉल हो सकता है और हमारा ऑरेंज कलर वही है बाकी जो इलाका है वहाँ मेनली पूर्वोत्तर राज्यों में भी बाईस तारीख ऑनवर वेरी हैवी रेनफॉल होगा बाकी इलाका जो है वेदर जो है लाइट टू मॉडरेट रेनफॉल होगा दिल्ली में रिजिली या लाइट रेनफॉल हो सकता है In Punjab the flood situation is continuing to worsen due to water being released from various dams in the state about 282875 cusics of water was released yesterday from Husainiwala headworks that has inundated several low lying areas in Firozpur and Fazilka districts more details from our correspondent 
After Gurdaspur district, the situation in Taran Taran, Firozpur, and Fazilka district is also getting worse. As per the latest information, several border villages in these districts have also been submerged under several feet of flood water. People are coming to safer places with their valuable things and other belongings. There are reports of many cattle getting washed away in the water in the villages, and due to the death of cattle, the risk of spreading diseases in the villages is also increasing. The Hussaini Wala Martyrdom Memorial in Firozpur district has also been marooned. Crops were destroyed in thousands of acres in the affected villages. Shishu Sharma Shantal, Akashwani News, Jalandhar. The government has notified the Green Hydrogen Standard for India in a significant move for the progress of the National Green Hydrogen Mission. The standard, issued by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, outlines the emission thresholds that must be met in order for hydrogen produced to be classified as green, that is from renewable sources. The scope of the definition encompasses both electrolysis-based and biomass-based hydrogen production methods. After discussions with multiple stakeholders, the ministry has decided to define green hydrogen as having a well-to-gate emission, including water treatment, electrolysis, gas purification, drying and compression of hydrogen of not more than 2 kg carbon dioxide equivalent. The notification specifies that a detailed methodology for measurement, reporting, monitoring, on-site verification and certification of green hydrogen and its derivatives shall be specified by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. In news, Justin, the central government has granted 200 crore rupees as an advance from the National Disaster Response Fund, NDRF, to the Himachal Pradesh government. This aid aims to support relief measures during the current monsoon se season. The Ministry of Home Affairs, MHA, informed that the central government has already released two installments of the State Disaster Response Fund, SDRF, totaling 360.80 crore rupees last month and 189 crore rupees this month from the NDRF of past dues. It said that the center is monitoring the situation in Himachal 24 by 7 and 20 NDRF teams, three Indian Air Force helicopters and nine columns of the Indian Army Public Information are deployed currently in the state for rescue and relief. On the sidelines of the Chintan Shiver of the Ministry of Finance, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman will interact with the G20 India representatives of the finance track. The two-day Chintan Shiver of the Ministry of Finance will officially be inaugurated at the Statue of Unity at Kivadia tomorrow. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman will address the Shiver tomorrow. In Jammu and Kashmir, the 62-day-long annual Sri Amarnathji Yatra 2023 shall remain temporarily suspended from the 23rd of this month. Akashwani Jammu correspondent reports that the Yatra shall remain suspended from both routes in view of reduced pilgrim flow and track restoration works. Prime Minister Narendra Modi paid tributes to the former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi on his birth anniversary today. Rajiv Gandhi, who served as the 7th Prime Minister of India from 1984 to 1989, was born on the 20th of August 1944. India will take on hosts in the second T20 international of three-match series at Malahide Cricket Club in Ireland today. In first T20 match, India defeated Ireland by two runs via Duckworth Lewis method to take a 1-0 lead in the three-match series in Dublin. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Lander module of Chandrayaan-3 reaches required lunar orbit to commence soft landing process on south pole of the moon. Descent to surface expected around 5.45 p.m. on Wednesday. Union Home and Cooperation Minister Amit Shah launches Garib Kalyan Maha Abhyan and 20 years report card of Madhya Pradesh government in Bhopal. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur and BJP President JP Nadda assess damages due to rain and landslides in Himachal Pradesh. IND predicts very heavy rainfall in isolated places of Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand during the next two to three days. In Punjab, flood situation worsens due to water release from various dams in the state and in cricket, India to play second T20 of three match series against host Ireland at Malahide Cricket Club. And with that, we end the midday news.